Can we grow plants on Mars? Mars is a big, red and cold planet that doesn't offer much to us as of now. However, the view of scientists are very different. They believe that we can actually create Earth-like conditions on Mars that will enable us to live on it. I thought a lot about this. I thought about the things we would need to have in order to live on Mars. The things a person would need on Mars, how the person would get their food, their water, and all their other essentials, and how we could change the temperature on Mars, and so much more. Within all these subtopics, plants seem to come up very often. On, plant, on Earth, plants help us give, give us food and allow us to breathe fresh and clean air. They also play a big role in changing the atmosphere's gases. I chose this topic because right now, growing plants on Mars is a huge interest to science. I wanted to test plant growth in simulated Martian regolith because if I can prove that we can grow plants in simulated Martian soil, it will help us direct what we need to do next to put a human on Mars and to get people to live on the red planet. I did this project because I know that life on Mars is a pressing issue that scientists are researching. As well as that, I thought this project was a very unique one and would be a very interesting and exciting experiment to conduct. This project is also very relevant as of now. For example, just a few weeks ago, the rover from NASA, Perseverance, landed on Mars in an attempt to bring back Martian regolith back to Earth in order to test it. In order to find whether plants can grow on Mars, I decided to conduct an experiment. In my experiment, I, do, I grew two different microgreens, fenugreek and mustard, in three different conditions, a simulated Martian regolith, earth potting soil, and a paper towel. I chose microgreens as they are highly adaptable and have a short germination period. I hypothesized that in growing these plants, the plants in the earth soil would grow the best and the tallest, which would be followed by the paper towels, and I predicted that the plants in the Martian regolith would grow the shortest and the least. To conduct this experiment, I used these materials. Six cardboard containers, 60 mustard seeds, 60 fenugreek seeds, two thirds of one of the cardboard containers full of soil, two thirds of one of the cardboard containers full of Mars soil simulant, two paper towels, two popsicle sticks, and one water spray. First, I created the Martian regolith by mixing one tenth of a bag of volcanic rock with one bag of sand and stirring this with a popsicle sticks for five seconds. Normally, the Martian regolith contains many different chemicals, such as iron oxide, silicon dioxide, and different types of perchlorates. I could not include these chemicals, however, into my experiment as they were difficult to purchase and some of the chemicals are harmful to humans. For my procedure, I put one third of a container of soil in two boxes, one third of a container of Mars soil simulant in two boxes, and one paper towel in each of the remaining two containers. Then, as I put the seeds inside, I covered the seeds inside the earth soil with another thin layer of earth soil. After I watered my plants every day and noted my observations. In my observations, I stated that the earth soil grew the best. However, the regolith was only about 0.2 to 0.6 centimeters behind the earth soil, which was more than double the paper towel. The rate at which the three plants were growing were approximately the same. However, the plants inside the potting soil grew at a rate of about 0.03 centimeters a day, more than my Mars soil simulant, and a rate of about 0.06 centimeters per day more than the paper towels. Through my qualitative observations, it is clear that the earth potting soil produced the best results in a nine day period. However, it is also evident that the simulated Martian regolith soil produced a lot of plants, especially from the mustard seeds. In both cases, the plants in the paper towels had the least growth. After conducting my experiment, I came to the conclusion that my hypothesis was partially correct. As I, as I explained in my results, the plants grown in the potting soil grew the tallest, which supported my hypothesis. However, the plants in the Martian regolith proved to germinate more and grow much taller than the plants in the paper towels. This proves my hypothesis wrong. 
Using this information, we can now say that Martian regolith is capable of growing plants well. However, the chemicals in the Martian soil would have to be removed as most of them are very harmful towards plants and humans. Because Mars's average temperature is negative 63 degrees Celsius, in which no plant can possibly grow, we would have to use an effect known as the greenhouse effect to regulate the temperature of the area where the plants would grow. Overall, growing plants on Mars is a difficult task, but given the appropriate conditions and care toward the plants, my experiment proves that it is in fact possible to grow plants on Mars.